my name is Ulrike Zimmermann and I'm a director, author and producer of the film Volvar 3.0. Hi, my name is Claudia Richards. I'm director and camerawoman of the film Vulva 3.0. The film is about the vulva and knowledge that is forgotten in the history of it. And we show it in our film. Hmm. Wir würden jetzt von hier, von unten reingehen und würden das mit einer Spritze machen. Hmm. Also mit hmm. einem sogenannten Filler, mit einem Füllstoff. Hmm. Ja, sehr geil. So how did you have the idea to, to shoot this movie? How did you get to the movie? Uh, I, was, I was shooting in, in northern Iraq uh, with the Kurdish uh, businesswoman. And we had some interviews there. And uh, afterwards I, I learned that uh, more than 40% of the Kurdish women in northern Iraq are circumcised. Uh, so FGM is not an African issue, it is also a European issue. And it, and, uh, and it was a very irritating ex experience for me because I found out that the image I had of this, of, this, of this woman changed immediately after I got this kind of information. So I started research and research on FGM and found out that uh, FGM is nothing that has to do with Africa, that we have also a history. Uh, 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 I, I got in contact with Marion Hulberscheid, who is a medicine uh, historian, and uh, I learned that the last circumcision, circumcision? circumcision in Europe was done uh, to, to prevent uh, hysteria. Um, also in the 50s in London, this, this century, okay. or the last century, or the yeah. 20th century. And uh, that was when I started to get really interested in the, in the whole issue. So what is really done with, uh, 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 with FGM? What does it mean? What, uh, uh, what does it mean anatomically? Mm. What, is, what is cut exactly? And uh, so Claudia came at that point, I joined the project, yeah. mm -hmm. and I was very interested too. And then, then we started the research about FGM yeah. and circumcision. Yeah, so FGM. Yeah, anatomy. Yes, and, and, and female anatomy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got deeper and deeper into the theme and found out, for example, that it's not this knowledge about the clitoris is forgotten. What was and the knowledge was there in the 17th century, even earlier, and now women don't know about that. And mm. so we get into it. Mm. Uh, be before we get into those anatomical things, what I found interesting was that you said that your image of the person changed immediately. C can you explain what changed? It's a bit embarrassing <laughs> because, yeah, yeah I. I uh, it's a bit embarrassing because I found out that my image went into this feminist uh, a view to see women like victims. Mm -hmm. She was immediately victimized and I couldn't uh, 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 change it back. It was just there. From the moment I got this information, she was sort of a victim and she wasn't this successful uh, uh, a businesswoman anymore, mm -hmm. S and this this has to do with the uh, the German kind of feminism. They have always this switch, and it has to do with uh, the power of sexuality, and it has to do with uh, our idea of anatomy. What is happening? What is exactly happening? And why does it have this big effect. Hmm. I had the feeling that a lot of people or a lot of women that got circumcised also do not have an awareness of what actually happened with them or happens with them. There was this scene in the movie where, where this one woman from Africa tells about it, how she for the first time talked with someone else about it. And um, yeah, it, to me it appeared that 
that a lot of people do, are not conscious about. It. Neither men in Africa nor women in Africa, and that I found fascinating because, or well, fascinating is probably not the right word, but interesting because it seems that it's a very big taboo there as well to talk about those things. Mm -hmm. But here as well, isn't it? I mean, who talks about vaginas? Vulvas. Oh, vulvas. I'm sorry. It, yeah. I, the words I'm not that familiar. What is the political correct one? Vagina, <laughs> vulva. It depends on what you what you want to describe. Do you want to describe the uh, the part that is mostly used uh, to create and uh, deliver children, mm -hmm. or do you want to describe the part that is made for female lust? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Just the first one is vagina. The second one is vulva. The vagina is is in our imagination. In reality, it's all one organ. But in our imagination, uh, the vagina is the counterpart for the penis. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is a circumcision happening and someone is suing uh, the uh, the vagina. Um, our idea of sexuality and lust is nothing can happen anymore because the, the usual form of penetration can't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea that the vulva is a whole lust organ uh, um, that's still there is not uh, implemented in our heads. So it's, um, it's for us very, very interesting to see um, how people react on our title, because usually you say vagina. Yeah. And uh, 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 but it's the uh, it's an expression for one part of the vulva. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the vagina is much less than the vulva. The vulva mm -hmm. is a whole thing, and the vagina is just this little uh, piece where you can put the penis in or give birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I used yeah, it synonymously. That's a very. Um, that's okay. a, very simple yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well I think already there you see that that there is a lot to learn about it if we have to talk about those simple things mm -hmm. in fact mm -hmm. because I remember that we in school never talked about it mm -hmm. never I mean I remember that we got separated for for sexualkunde and boys and girls separated. boys and girls and boys yeah. talked about penises but not about women yeah, but that is sort it's of an interesting concept. Uh. Yeah, it, it was an interesting <laughs> concept. That you didn't talk about women at all. Um, a bit, but not about anatomy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, you also had scenes in schools where you where you showed models that you say are actually good models. Finally, that explain female anatomy. But there is a lot of the, uh, a lack of those things in schools, isn't there? It is, yeah. And also, this is the only one model which is shown in our film that it explains it correctly. Mm -hmm. The other models don't explain it correctly. That's mm. why she developed this model, because she found out it has to be shown exactly to young girls mm. and also to women. And there's also a lot of insecurity, if I got it right, because, I mean, a lot of women do not know about their own anatomy. This is true. And not even the surgeons learn it. Yes. Seriously. And also, yeah. uh, gynecologues yeah. also don't know it. But don't, uh, they sorry, don't maybe. learn it. Okay. They don't learn it when they study. This is how Dr. Tsam tells in our film that if you study this, you don't learn about it. You almost find nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So the, the surgeon don't learn anything about the female clitoris, for example, because uh, um, there is no need for it. Uh, uh, she never gets sick. Mm -hmm. Clitoris only for pleasure. And it, yes. Yeah. And so they Perhaps don't know where it is. That's why we don't have to know it. And they uh, and and nevertheless they they uh, uh, they practice the the surgery. surgery in this area mm -hmm. without knowing yeah. what they really do. Which can also lead to a lot of damage. Yes. Yeah. If you don't know what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I remember from the movie that she showed those pictures. And she said those pictures in the medical books are really not well done, they're not mm -hmm. very good. So yes. that's what, what you're also referring to. Yes. Yeah. And 
Well, I guess you did a lot of research on those things as well in that time. And do you do you know how many women actually go and have plastic surgery done in, around their vulva with their vulva? A lot. A lot. But many, I do, we don't know have exact numbers, but it's increasing. Okay. It's very increasing. It's really a big business, and it's getting more and more. And what's the reason for that? Is that also because there is no education about it in school and those women do not feel confident with what they have because they get too influenced by, by commercials or what is it? Is it a mass of pornography? No, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with pornography but it has to do with, uh, with the uh, uh, body ideals and, and uh, if, you, if, you, if you see this guy who, who is... Who is uh, uh, the editor, um, no? photo editor. Retouching. Yeah, who's manipulating the pictures. Manipulating yeah. the pictures. These are, these are the pictures we see every day and it's not pornography, it's just uh, naked women. Yeah. And uh, um, there's not enough communication about uh, naked bodies, nakedness or... or uh, uh, the looks of, of, of the of the genitalia because we have this switch aha that's pornographic uh, and uh, um, so we avoid um, uh, depicting uh, uh, the uh, uh, the naked body and uh, that leads to mis misunderstanding that's my my opinion um, the more we see what the whole variety looks like, the better it would be for the uh, 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 for for the women how they uh, um, like themselves, and there would be no reason to change anything. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lack of information and a lack of depiction. If they don't know what their genitalia look like, and uh, but they, they get an image, what they should like, mm -hmm. what, and, uh, look like, what they should look like, and that's why they think they are not okay. Mm -hmm. It should be different. Mm -hmm. we, we also have this doctor in our film, and she tells us if you have one labia one centimeter long and the other is three, then it's not okay. Mm. You should cut it because one centimeter and two centimeter, that's okay, but one and three is not okay, and this is not true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but with the doctors, I also had the feeling, okay, they make money with it, they have to say those things, otherwise, they wouldn't make money with it. It's more complicated, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why is it more complicated? It's more complicated because um, the guys on. It's a reaction. There are women coming to them and asking them, I don't know if I'm okay, yeah. please tell me. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fault of the guys that they are asked. Um, uh, the, it's, a, it's a ritual that's, that's absurd, that she doesn't know it herself. And um, uh, that she thinks there's a need to ask a guy uh, if she's okay or not. Hmm. And he really thinks he helps her. Hmm. But wasn't it a female doctor in the movie? Yeah. 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 Was, yeah. Okay. And but at the end of the movie there are also these male doctors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that this mm. sort of congress. Yeah. Yes, are, it was a congress. Yeah, yes. Which, I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong with this, but I had the feeling that this was very gruesome in a way that people really gather and sort of try to say what is beautiful and how it has to be and then everyone is sort of learning how to do it there and uh, I don't know I, I really have the feeling that there you see how society puts measurements on people and how they gather and uh, talk about it. Yeah that's one aspect. The other aspect is that uh I learned there that it's absolutely necessary that they gather because everyone who is a doctor, a medicine person, is allowed to do this kind of surgery. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone is allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. So there is no standard. 
You can't imagine what's happening there. So it was a very, very good idea to do this Congress and to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the other aspect. Okay, yeah, and that's the other side of the story. Yeah. And then seriously me, uh, met there because I wanted to discuss different methods how to do it, and they wanted to learn from each other. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Under that aspect, this that's aspect okay. is okay. But then I wonder why there are no rules about those things. Is it because female anatomy, female sex sexuality is something that is denied in our society, that is something very taboo that no one talks about and that is also why there is a lack of, of control for doctors, for example? Mm. Mm. It is a taboo, of course. People, uh, women, women and men are afraid of the female sexuality. Mm -hmm. I think they have to tame it somehow. It's, it, it's not very uh, uh, real, but you have to tame it. Mm -hmm. There's something ugly about it or mm. too strong or and something to tame like and to reduce it. Yeah. Because it's too big and too much. Yeah. Yeah. Women don't know it and um, it shall, shall also it shall not be known in society. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were sad about. We think it should be known. But where does this fear come from? Why why is that that it is so taboo? Probably there is in a no patriarchal society. Yeah. It's uh, if there is a, um, if you have a full scale f feminine energy, it's uh, dangerous. <laughs> it is dangerous. You could leave your husband, for example, because you have such a wild, um, big uh, sexuality that you want to go. You have to live it everywhere. Hmm. Maybe yeah. your sexual energy. It's yeah. too much. So this topic is actually connected to bigger power structures within society. Probably, yeah. yeah. Good idea, yes. Hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's interesting. The, I, mean, I find this aspect of sexual control and control within society interesting, that this probably goes together, that mm. one triggers the other, so to say. Mm. Probably. Yes, and if you are aware of your sexual power and energy, then you have a more, you are more conscious of yourself and you have a much stronger whole personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just recently read something that Elfriede Jelinek said, and she said that she was actually very much against this movement of women being concerned with their bodies, because she says, if women are just concerned with their bodies all the time, nothing will ever change. What, what do you say about that? Yeah, that's one. That's one aspect. Um, I think that Friede Jelinek is is right. It's a steile these. It's okay. Um, uh, and uh, I would agree on a political level. Mm -hmm. uh, but if if we are if we are talking about history, for example, history of the depiction of the vulva, that's what our issue is. Um, is um, it's necessary to care. It's absolutely necessary to care. Uh, uh, um, as far as I understood, Elfriede Jelinek, uh, she she doesn't mean to care about depiction. Uh, she means to care about how how do I look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I can't imagine that Elfriede Jelinek is a person that is against more depiction of the of the female genitalia. Yeah. Yeah, also, she would like if we are aware of our bodies mm -hmm. to be concerned is something different than to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think she would agree if you say you should be aware of your body, what you are, what you have. Yes. And from, oh, I had the feeling that there were people who tried to approach this topic before. Like I was thinking of the vagina monologues, for example, where I had the feeling that you could clearly see that women get alienated from their own body, from their own sexuality, and then that was approach to go back there to actually make them comfortable with their, with their vulva, with their sexuality. But 
why is there still the need for it? I mean, why did this not help? Why do we not get there yet? I mean, those things happened quite a long time ago, but somehow it seems society does not change to a better, does it? Uh, it's very complicated um, uh, because it's not, uh, there is not a line in it like uh, that's what women think. You don't have this uh, group of female persons that have all the same opinion. Mm -hmm. um, you will you will never find in one room uh, two women have have the same experience, background, or, uh, uh, or or knowledge or meaning. And um, in a patriarchal society, the situation is. Uh, uh, not, not like uh, that. Uh, every feminine person thinks that she's uh, in a uh, in a bad situation. So you have this uh, uh, concurrence issue. And Competition. Think, yeah, and uh, um, we we have one one uh, one sentence in the film uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's said by by Frau Seiler of the um, uh, uh, Hamburg uh, uh, Gesundheits Gesundheitszentrum she said that there are not enough women around the young girl telling her that she's beautiful and that she's okay it doesn't happen mm -hmm. There is not the patriarchs saying there, uh, sitting there, standing there. You are ugly. It's the, it's the, uh, uh, it's the mother, it's the sister, uh, telling this. And probably also commercials. Yes, of course, yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, there are many layers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and since we uh, uh, deal with this theme, we meet always women who don't know how big their clitoris is. They don't know it. So it is a need to say this. I guess a lot of them don't even see it as an organ, do they? Yes, they only say, like Marion Hülverscheid says in our film, she says, this knuddelchen. Mm -hmm. It's just <laughs> such a little thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just like it is shown on the medical pictures as well. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, for a bigger change, it would also be necessary then probably to change the books in school and so forth, yeah, yeah. because otherwise there will not be an awareness. Yeah, that's yeah. why Angelika Beck developed this model mm -hmm. because she says it's a need that these models are in school because you can see it then, and not these uh, old models. Mm -hmm. But are there initiatives that try to also change the biology books for schools? Of course, since yeah, since ages. Uh, but we had this, we had this uh, uh, shift. I think it was in the 70s when we had this pedophilia debate, uh, and the, 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 the depiction of um, uh, naked children wasn't allowed anymore. Okay, but you could still draw pictures. Yeah. Yeah, you could I mean, you you yeah. draw exact pictures. But if the doctors even don't learn it. Well, why it's, should it's it be in the biology mind. books? Yeah. yeah, they don't know it. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, it's incredible that doctors don't learn it, and also that every doctor can do those surgeries. Yeah. Um, but what I really think is that if you if you want to change it, I guess, and if you want to reach a lot of people, I guess you have to start with with young women, with girls in school. Yeah. Do, do you show the movie in schools? Is it also planned to do that? Probably, yeah. We just showed it once in Berlin, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, we plan to show it as, uh, as far as possible, yeah, as but, much as possible. Yeah, but also old women have to learn about it because Definitely, they teach yeah. it to young women, and also men. Yeah. yeah. And, well, I also think that, that teachers in general have to lose their fear of sexuality, because I remember that in my school, it was not a topic that teachers like to, to tackle in any way. Yeah. So, yeah. But what do you think, how would, how would girls in school react to that? To what we, uh, to, to, our the, film, to, to the our movie, film. if you would screen that in schools. We hope they like it. <laughs>
Probably, yeah. yeah. I think uh, we didn't test it yet. Yeah, no, we, we had no chance to show it to young women yet. But I think I, I was asked by a mother actually whether she could take her daughter tomorrow to our film. Mm -hmm. As she, her daughter's 15. And I told her, I think she can do it. Maybe she, it's a little bit shocking, yeah. but uh, it's good for her. She mm -hmm. can learn a lot and it will help her. Also, our film, I think it's a slow film and it's, uh, you can show it to young people. Is, is the film rated in any way already? I mean, not yet. Not yet. Do you think it will be? Or do you think it will 16, be? 16, I think. 16? Mm. Okay. People ask for 16. I think 16 yeah. is good. and. Uh, if, if you're younger and there are some uh, uh, grown-up people around who discuss it, yes. it's, it's okay for 12, 10, 12 okay. years old. Yeah, I guess that is also something that, that would probably help a lot if, if they could talk with someone about it after they yeah. watch the movie. Because that is also, I had the feeling, what the movie is about. Talk about it, speak with people yeah. about it, yeah. get to know it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And they also can learn in our film that circumcised women have a sexual, a good, can have a good sexual life, mm. which is told by this woman in our film. And this is also a knowledge which is not so spread. Yeah. Well, I have to say I learned a lot when I watched the movie. <laughs> and um, I hope a lot of people will watch it and will learn a lot. And thank you very much for making this movie. And thank you very much for the interview. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.